Good morning, everyone. This is a workshop on the clinical application of CADs in orthodontics. It's made of, of seven parts, and this is the first part <clears throat> called introduction. Now, temporary anchorage devices, or as named as TADs, are commonly known as mini implants. They're also known as mini screws, micro implants, micro screws, and many other names, but they generally mean the same thing. A TAD is a device that is temporarily fixed to bone and is subsequently removed after use. So it has to be temporarily fixed. The purpose of enhancing is to enhance anchorage and this is done by either supporting the teeth of the anchor unit when you are working with it indirectly or by applying force on the reactor unit when you are working directly. A, a real implant, uh, the one that is osseo integrated, is an excellent anchor unit. You can use it to retract teeth and apply pressure on it. It will not move, but it is not considered as a pad since it is not, it's not discarded after the orthodontic treatment. So why are they so popular? What's the advantage of using pads? Well, firstly, the ease of insertion and removal. They're versatile in that they can be inserted in any anatomical site, or many, not any. Possible, so possibility of immediate loading, small size, or relatively, so relatively low risk of damaging the tooth roots or neurovascular structures near the insertion site. And their cost is relatively cheap, especially nowadays where it's cheaper to have two pads inserted rather than to take an impression and send it to the lab to make a transpiratal bar, for example. The, the classification, they're generally classified into three forms, either the conical or the cylindrical type of screw design, and these are called as mini implants or mini screws. Or the second type is the implant discs, like this one, the on plants, which are used in the palatal region. The third type is the mini plates, which are fixed by bone screws to the bone, and they have an attachment going outside of the gingiva for attachment of elastics. Now, considering the parts of the mini implants, they're basically composed of a body, a collar, a neck, and the head. Now, the body is this region, which is a shaft of metal, and it has a thread going around it, and this body is very polished. The length of the body is usually stated on the outside of the package. So when you buy an implant that says it's six millimeters long, it's the head of the body that's six millimeters long, not all the implant that's six millimeters long. There are two types. There's the cylindrical type and there's the conical type. And there's a controversy about which one's better, which one uh, provides less stress and has a higher success rate whether the cylindrical or the conical type. The flute, the, these uh, screws and uh, the threads, they can differ in the shapes. There are so many types like buttress, reverse buttress, and rounded, etc. So many designs according to the manufacturer's reference. And the tip of the body, there are two types. There's the self-tapping, which is this one, which is a blunt one. And there's the sharp one, like this one. Regarding the second part, the collar, this collar is wider than the body, and that's to make a definitive stop so that the collar does not insert inside the bone. This collar is usually highly polished because it goes inside the mucus, the, the mucosa, and that's why it is commonly known as the transmucosal collar. But sometimes, it is not so polished and it has small serrations and they claim that these serrations, they make a better adhesion of the epithelium to the implant. They generally end up with this small platform of uh, the implant. And this platform is generally helpful so that it presses on the soft tissue and prevents the soft tissue overgrowth over the implant. Some implants, you can add onto them a ring which act as a platform, as this one. 
also to prevent the overgrowth of the soft tissue over it. The third part is the neck. The neck is smaller in diameter than the uh, collar or the platform or the head. And this is so that you can thread over it the uh, power chain or uh, coil spring for attachment. There are so many types of necks so that you can see here there are smaller necks, wider ones with holes and collars. In my preference, I prefer the ones with holes so that you can ligate a ligature wire through them. This is a very useful feature. I also like the ones that have a wide platform so that they can have a definitive stop of, over the gum so that the gum does not overgrow over the tissue. Some manufacturers do both, some don't. And as you can see here, the ligature wire is passed through the hole and then ligated and it's ligated to the coil spring. Now this ligation, the, uh, you can <clears throat> pass it over the neck and just ligate it, but it's easier and much more definitive to go through the hole so that it does not slip at any time during treatment. The fourth and last part is the head. And there are various types of heads. There's this wider head and there's the head with a button. And there are the ones with uh, an arch wire slot which can be just one like a minus or both cross head like a plus sign. And these can be used, the ones with an arch wire slot so that you can pass a wire through them and attach various attachments to them. The arch wire has to be fixed to the implant using composite since you cannot attach them through ligature wires securely. So you have to use composite to attach them. The other types like this one, you would add a power chain or a coil spring and use them for the attachment to, to provide some force on the uh, uh, reactive. Okay. And the characteristics of tabs, generally the diameter, it will range from 1.2 to 2 millimeters. If you go for narrower ones, then they may break during insertion or removal. If you go for wider ones, then these may hit the neighboring teeth. So staying within the medium range of 1.4 to 1.6 millimeters probably would be a better choice. They also come in a variety of lengths. And as I said, the length is the length of the body and not the whole implant. So they come from six millimeters up to 12 millimeters and generally staying from eight to 10 millimeters is more common. The material that they're used from is, should be non-toxic and biocompatible. It should possess excellent mechanical properties should resist stress, strain, and corrosion. And the most common one was when I used pads back in 2005 was from Leona, it was stainless steel. And this was made so that it is not uh, osseointegrated with the bone. But later it was replaced by titanium when they found out that highly polished titanium also doesn't osseointegrate. Later replaced by titanium alloys. And these are the stronger and they don't uh, osseointegrate. So you can have a smaller implant that is uh, of sufficient strength and, strength and it doesn't osseointegrate. The surface characteristics, uh, you do not want it to be rough as it may osseointegrate with bone. You want it to be highly polished. And regarding implant driving methods, there's the self-tapping method and the self-drilling method. And it depends on the tip, if it's sharp or if it's blunt. So the blunt one here, you need a drill. You'll pass a drill, a burr like this one, and you put a hole inside the bone, and then you would just drill this thing, uh, the implant inside through a tunnel created by the drill. Why is it called self-tapping? Because tapping means to open a screw inside the bone. So this drill just is a little bit smaller than the implant and the implant is self-tapping. It will open the screw inside the bone. On the other side, a sharper one called a self-drilling or self-cutting. This self-drilling or self-cutting one is used because it does not need a drill. You can immediately insert it inside the bone without the use of a drill. But sometimes if you have very thick cortical bone, 
you need to just use a small round bar so that you can pierce the cortical bone probably one or two millimeters would be sufficient and you continue using this sharp implant so that it penetrates through the packaging of the implants they come in uh, different packages as bags or capsule bags like these ones but be careful that these ones are generally as stated non-sterile so they are clean they are probably even sterilized from the manufacturer but the manufacturer does not guarantee that it's sterile especially that they are put in vulnerable plastic bags you need to put them in a pouch and separate them one by one or probably two at the same time and uh, autoclave them and now they're ready for use but more recently you have these types of bags in which there's a capsule inside and these are already uh, sterilized i would prefer to use these they may cost a few dollars extra but they do cut down on time and they're very applicable and practical and thank you for watching this ends this part of the uh, first part of the workshop if you like what you hear then please like share and uh, comment as you wish and subscribe to the channel so that you can see the next episode when it is up thank you for listening